Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a question from one of my endotopic worksheets, which is question 10 from P3, uh, the P3 endotopic worksheet number four, which is about trigonomic, tri tri trigonometric addition formulae. This is um, related to the P3 book, and <clears throat> this is taken from a paper, an old past paper, um, part of the Solomon collection, Solomon G, question number two. Um, from the old C3 papers and this question in part A is telling us to use the identities for cosine A plus B and cosine A minus B to prove that 2 cosine A cosine B is identical to cosine A plus B plus cosine of A minus B. Now, they're telling us to use the addition formulae which are, you know, given in the formula book and these are the addition formulae here for cosine a plus b and cosine a minus b is what, which is what we need so they want to show that when you add cosine a plus b and cosine a minus b you end up with this that's basically what they want us to show that's how this would work so i'm going to i'm going to write cosine a plus b in its expanded form which is given in this formula as cosine a plus b is equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b so I'll do that first. I'll say cosine of A plus B is equal to the cosine of A times the cosine of B minus the sine of A times the sine of B. And I'll also write, write down what the cosine of A minus B is. And we can see this cosine A minus B is cosine A cosine B plus sine A sine B. So we can use that. I'll just stick that up there for now. So that's equal to the same thing, except we're going to have a plus between them. So it's going to be cosine A, cosine B, plus sine A, sine B. So we've written these two in expanded form, and we want to find cosine A plus B plus cosine A minus B. So I need to add these two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this equation 1 and equation 2, and I'm going to add together equation 1 and 2. And when I add them together, this will give me the cosine of a plus b plus the cosine of a minus b which is what we have to start with here and that's equal to and if i add these together these two cancel out if i do one plus two these two cancel out because you have minus sine a sine b plus sine a sine b and here you got two of the same thing two cosine a cosine b you're going to add these together i'll just write this to show the step cosine a cosine b plus cosine a cosine b so therefore we can now say 2 cosine a cosine b 2 therefore 2 times cosine of a times cosine of b is identical to what we have here cosine a plus b plus cosine of a minus b okay so there we have proved um, this identity that they asked us to prove. Okay, so there's part A done, pretty simple. Um, and part B then says, hence or otherwise, find in terms of um, <coughs> pi the solutions of this equation here. So hence is always a word which makes us realize we have to use our results from the previous question. So I'm going to take this result and I'm going to write it down here so I keep it in my mind and I'll keep it there. And I'm going to try to use this result to solve this equation. So the first thing I see is I have a secant here. And here there's all cosines. So what I'm going to do is I'll write this as 1 over the cosine of this angle. So what I'll do is first I'll say 2 cosine of the angle x plus pi over 2 is equal to, this is going to be 1 over the cosine of the angle x plus pi over 6. All right, now what I can do is I can multiply both sides by cosine pi, cosine of x plus pi over 6, and I will have, be, I'll be left with just 1 on that side just to get rid of the fraction. So I have 2 times cosine of x plus pi over 2 times the cosine of x plus pi over 6 equals 1. All right, so now we have to use this result here. Okay, so how are we going to use this result? in this problem here. So let's bring this down here. Um, now, 
what I've what I see here is I see two times cosine of something times the cosine of something else. These are two different angles. So I can think of my a as x plus pi over 2 and my b as x plus pi over 6. That's like a and that's like b. 2 cosine a cosine b equals, so I can rewrite this now, this part, as in this form. That's how I use what we have shown earlier. Now, what it's going to lead to, we'll see. Maybe it'll make it more confusing, but let's just see where it leads because they told us to use this, so that's how I'm using this. This is 2 times the cosine of an angle times the cosine of a different angle equals the cosine of the sum of those two angles. So I've got to add these two angles together. So a plus b would be x plus pi over 2 plus x plus pi over 6. Well, that's going to give me 2x plus, so pi over 2 plus pi over 6. Well, that's 3 pi over 6 plus pi over 6. That's 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. If I add pi over 2 and pi over 6, I get 2 pi over 3. So that's what a plus b is. So I can say that I can rewrite this as, see the 2 has disappeared. You've got rid of the coefficient. There's no coefficient of 2 here. So I can just write that as cosine of the sum of those two angles, which gives me um, 2x plus 2 pi over 3, okay, plus the cosine of the difference between those two angles. So we've got to do a minus b, which is x plus pi over 2 minus x plus pi over 6. I'm going to subtract them. So x minus x is 0, so there will be no, no x here. And we have pi over, six minus, pi over 2 minus pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 6, which gives you pi over 3. So th this will give me just cosine of pi over 3, okay, because the x will become 0 when you subtract them. And that's equal to 1. So now I can, I think cosine pi over 3, that's going to be um, a half. Cosine of 60 is a half. Pi over 3 is 60. That's right, that gives you a, ha a half. So this will give me the cosine of 2x plus 2 pi over 3 plus plus a half equals 1. So that means I've got to solve the equation where cosine of 2x plus 2 pi over 3 is equal to 1 minus a half, which is a half. So I've got to solve this equation, and my limits are between 0 and pi. Okay, so my limits are between 0 and pi. So I have to change the limits according to this. So 2 times, so this is going to say 2x plus 2 pi over 3. And this is going to be 2 times 0 plus 2. So I have to catch the angles between 2 pi over 3 and, and I have 2 pi over th 2 pi over 3 plus, sorry, 2 pi plus 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi plus 2 pi over 3. Okay. Um, and that gives me, that's 2 pi is 6 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. That's 2 pi plus 2 pi over 3. That's 8 pi over 3. So I have to go as far as 8 pi over 3, and I start from 2 pi over 3. So when I do inverse cosine of a half, so I'll do 2x plus 2 pi over 3 is equal to the inverse cosine of a half. Well, that gives me, the first angle is pi over 3. Now, pi over 3 is outside of our range, because we can start only from 2 pi over 3. But I'm going to use it to find the other angles. The other angle is... 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is going to be uh, 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 is the other angle. That's the other angle, which is in the range. Okay. And um, then all the other angles are separated from these two by 2 pi. So I've got to add 2 pi to this. So I've got 2 pi plus pi over 3, which is going to give me um, 6 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. That's going to be 7 pi over 3, which again is inside our range. And if I add 2 pi to this, I'm going to be um, outside of the range because I'm going to have 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. I've got to add to it pi over 3. Uh, pi, sorry, 2 pi. I've got to add to it 2 pi. 2 pi is the same as uh, 6 pi over 3. That will give me 11 pi over 3, which is outside the range. So if I add 2 pi to this, I'm going to be outside of the range. Okay, so these are the two angles in our range. These are the two angles in our range. So those are the angles that I'll use to find the solutions. So I'll say 2x plus 2 pi over 3 is equal to 
5 pi over 3 and 7 pi over 3. So I've got to find what x is. So I can say x is equal to, um, for the first angle, it's going to be 5 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. And you're going to divide that by 2. Okay, divide that by 2. And the other one will be 7 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 divided by 2. So x is going to be, this is going to be 3 pi over 3, which is pi divided by 2. So you're going to get pi over 2 as one of the angles. And 7 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 divided by 2 is 5 pi over 6. So these are the two solutions. These are two solutions to our equation here using this expansion that or this, you know, um, factor formula that we were given in the question. Right, so that's how we can solve such a question as this using what we did. Now, hence, or otherwise would be basically um, what I'm thinking is just expanding this in the normal way. But I think that would be very complicated. Um, there's probably another way of doing it. But of course, normally, when it says hence, that, that way is normally the simplest way of dealing with it. So we use this result that we found or we proved in part one. Even if you couldn't prove this result, we can use this result, just compare what we have to what we were, um, you know, what we were given. So once we've re rewritten in this form, we can compare this to this and see how this can be split up in that form. And we see how splitting up that form helps us here because one part just becomes a f fraction. You're left with one, um, one <coughs> term with the trig function and you can then solve it. Okay, so there's the answer to that question. I hope that was clear. Um, this is question 10 from the endotopic worksheet number four and also question two from Solomon paper G from the P3 or C3 collection. Thank you for watching. Um, other questions you might want to watch from this particular Solomon G paper you'll find in the playlist over here. Other questions from this topic or from this particular endotopic worksheet you will find in the playlist over here and other questions from the topic of trig um, equations and identities from P3 you can find in the, in the playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.